Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, guys? It's Filthy, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're looking at a Season 19 Casual Player tier list. Now, as a community, Diablo 3 has got some wonderful content creators. I really love Riker's tier list every single season. I look forward to it immensely. It's my favorite video every three months. Bloodshed has also started doing a tier list and that's fantastic because I know he plays the game six days a week for many hours and does play all the classes, so that's always a really useful one. And recently Rax has started to do a really good class tier breakdown, letting you know where you're going to get into groups, which class is going to do what. So we are very, very spoiled. But today I thought I'd do a tier list to try and help out people who are a bit more casual in the game, maybe aimed a bit more at solo players, maybe a bit more at newer players. Now I will timestamp the start of the actual list on screen now and in the description and I'll also timestamp the final tiering system if you just want to skip to the end because obviously I appreciate not everyone is going to want to listen to the explanation of how the list works or cover the seasonal changes. Now also in the description guys you'll find either a build guide from me on the builds that I'm suggesting or if I haven't done one yet it will be the best guide that I can find on the internet. Now I've got the majority of the builds covered and I will be filling in the gaps hopefully over the next few weeks. So if you're the kind of person who likes Diablo 3 and Diablo content, then do subscribe and check out future videos. And as always guys, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Now season 19 starts on the 22nd of November and is the season of eternal conflict. The season theme is really fun, I played it on PTR and it was great. The way it works is whenever you kill something you get a tiny damage increase, you also get a tiny move speed increase. You gain a stack with every kill and your stack's capped at a thousand. At 1000 stacks you deal 100% extra damage and have 50% extra move speed. Now as you make your way through kills you also get kill streak bonuses. So at 10 kills, 20 kills, 30 kills, 50 kills you get various effects on screen. They look really cool, they do actually do some damage so it is going to be very helpful and builds will generally hit harder this season than they have done in the past. Now in terms of the stacks, you can refresh them by hitting something, so you don't have to kill things constantly, but your stacks do drop off over time. So fast builds, builds that can chain kill streaks together, in my opinion are going to be more fun this season, and are probably going to be able to hit that little bit harder from the extra damage. Now new for 267, importantly we've got a brand new set for both the Crusader and Monk classes. They've been reworked from the PTR, and both of them do look pretty interesting and pretty powerful. We've also had a significant buff in the Whirlwind set, so the Wrath of the Waste for the Barbarian from 266 and Season 18. There also have been several buffed Barb items, so there are various different builds that we've got that we can now try for Barb. There are also supposed to be nerfs for Bazooka, Veers and Thorns, albeit it's not entirely clear as to whether they've been fixed or not. And at the moment 267 on live, I'm afraid it's a little bit of a mess, and they have indicated there's going to be a hotfix before Season 19. So. I'm going to do this tier list today, but I can't guarantee that the information is 100% accurate. It is subject to change. I will revisit this list and update the video in two to three weeks once everything is settled down. And it may be that some builds drop out the list and new ones come in or we move them around. But I know people like planning the season, so hopefully you will find this useful at this point. Now the list is intended for casual players. I may be going to say that's around about a thousand Paragon. Now I'm not saying that you can't be casual and get more, if I played the full season casually maybe I'd get 12 or 1400, but obviously some people play and they only get 4 or 500 Paragon, and I think casual can mean whatever it wants to to you. But this isn't a guide for people who are going to get 150 level augments and all their gear, you just need a simple power rating for that, and this really isn't what that's intended for. But hopefully you'll find it helpful if you're a newer player or returning after a long absence. Now guys, this to be honest is totally my opinion and there are lots of powerful builds and fun builds that didn't make it into the list, but I wanted to keep it to a reasonable level of builds, so it is where it is. So how does the list work? Well, in normal tier lists we just look at the GR clear potential, what's the highest GR you can do with the build. Now I don't think that's particularly useful for casual players because sometimes they have very complicated mechanics, sometimes they require specific gear pieces, in fact they near enough always do, and they can require quite a lot of mechanics that need to be executed at the exact same time. So this list really, it does use power as an initial starting point, but also what we want to concentrate on is fun, how well things fit with the season theme is going to be a factor utility of the build so can we push with it can we do gr speeds very quickly to get our gem ups and augments done can we do t16s with it can we do bounties how many swaps do we have to make and that sort of thing 
Now also a big consideration in this list is going to be ease of gearing because we don't want to be spending lots of time looking for items and re-rolling them. If obviously we're a casual player we want to get our hands on the most powerful and easiest things to play. Now each class has three builds on this list, so a total of 21. This is just simply to prevent overwhelm. So no matter which class you want to pick, there should be three options here for you to consider as a casual player. And with ease in mind, we're going to be looking at each class's starting set and trying to work out the best build we can do for that. Because obviously I do understand for some casual players, completing the season journey is all that matters. So ideally we're looking for builds that will be really strong for pushing, extremely fast for doing speed drifts, able to farm keys and do bounties with having easy gear requirements. So by way of example, if we looked at the Hammer of the Ancient skill for Barbarian, we've got several choices for playing that particular skill. On this list, we were going to pick the Immortal King version because it runs off a set, so it's much easier to gear for than Legacy of Dreams because there isn't that much of a difference between the two builds. So it's that kind of thing. Also, we're going to have things like Necro Thorns won't be on here because I just think that's probably too complex for casual players too difficult to gear and too fishy to play to its extreme potentials. Now this isn't to say that those builds are not very good and it's not to say that you can't do them as a casual player, it's just as I say we're trying to limit it to 21 builds, the most casual friendly that we can find. But there are some Legacy Dreams builds on here because obviously it is a powerful gem and a fun mechanic so I've tried to create a balance between the two. And one final thing guys, I am still quite new to this whole YouTube concept and making videos, so if you do think this could be presented in a better way or there are some changes you'd like in the format for the next video, please do get involved in the comments because it will help me for future videos and that's all I want to do is make better videos for you guys to enjoy. And the same goes for if a build is missing off this, if you do think it is powerful and very casual friendly, stick it in the comments because people do read them, and maybe you can get into a bit of discourse and maybe help somebody out. So that's enough waffling guys, let's get on with the list. Now in tier 7 we start off in last place with the Raymond of Thousand Storms Monk. Now this is quite a strong build for pushing and people can clear very high with this. It does require a lot of Paragon to use and it is the starting set for the Monk which is one of the reasons why it makes it onto the list. Now personally I think this is quite a hard set to gear for because even when you get the set for free you still have to find two particular fist weapons to get the most out of it. Fist weapons are a pain in RNG and it really does slow you down in terms of progression. Now because the way the build works is you just generally punch one enemy in the face at a time, it's not very good for trash clearing, it's not very good for wave clearing, so speed rifting is pretty difficult with it, and all in all I just think you're going to want to gear yourself off this and onto some form of wave of light, or to the new patterns of justice as quick as possible. So unfortunately, Raymond gets last place. Next up in tier 7 we also have a starting set and this is for the Witch Doctor. This is going to be the Helltooth Garg build. Now we can clear GR75 with this fairly efficiently in about 4 minutes. And Witch Doctor does have access to some pretty nice mobility skills. She can get an okayish bounty build out of this. But compared to some of the other builds on this list it's just underpowered. But again it's the starting set for the Witch Doctor. And it's not terrible, you, know, you can use it. It is possible to do GR100 with this build. But compared to other stuff I do think it's a little bit underpowered. Now rounding out tier 7 we've got the Tal Explosive Blast Wizard. Now this probably isn't the strongest speed farm that you can do with towels because Frozen Orbit is probably a little bit better, but this is certainly fun and is one of my absolute all time favourite builds. Now you can do GR75, 80 for speed drifts, it's really good for key farming. You can't really use it for pushing, which is obviously a bit of a shame, which is why it finds itself in tier 7, but it is a lot of fun and I do like it an awful lot. Now for tier 6 we're going to start off with the Legacy of Dreams Rapid Fire Demon Hunter. Now this is a really good push build, it is extremely strong, it's just you can't really do much else with it other than push. Obviously Legacy of Dreams is difficult to gear for, you've got to rank the gem up, get all your ancient pieces, and if we were just doing a power rating this would be much higher, but given that I don't feel this really has much utility, I'm going to put it in tier 6. Now next up we've got another push build, this is going to be Hammer of the Ancients, and we're going to be running the IK version. Now Hammer of the Ancients is a pretty strong skill for the Barb and the only reason that we're going to put this in tier 6 is because again it's one that is very hard to speed with because you can't really key farm, it's not great for bounties or for speed rifting, albeit it is very strong. Now there are other ways of running Hota such as Raycor or Legacy of Dreams but I just find that in terms of gearing and also ease of play that this is probably the best way to play Hammer of the Ancients if you are a casual player. Now next up we've got a really fun build that I like a lot which is going to be the God Mode Mages. Now this is primarily a speed build and we do GR8590 with some decent Paragon and some decent gear. 
but you can also convert this into a push build and you just take off some of the speed items and then you're on to legacy dreams mages push now, i think this probably will be the top pushing necro build taking thorns out of the equation because it does pair with the season theme quite well and the other push option you've got with necro is going to be lancer and that doesn't go so well with the season theme but it's a lot of fun and it's very strong it will require some adaptation for bounties but you'll be able to play around and figure it out pretty easily moving on to tier 5 we have probably what is the strongest witch dock the set base build which is going to be the jade witch dock now this is actually a lot of fun i played this a few seasons ago it's very powerful nice to blow up the enemies and it's a bit of a unique playstyle because it rolls around damage over time the witch doctor again always has access to really good mobility skills so it's quite nice for doing speed drifts and it's fairly okay for doing bounties and if it wasn't for the fact that it was a much more powerful witch doctor build it would probably be a little bit higher now also in tier 5 we've got the starting set for the necro which is the rathma build now rathma is really strong i think we were doing gr80 in about three four minutes with no main stat paragon and it's actually very easy to gear for and again also matches the season theme very well the only problem I've got with Rathma is it is pretty squishy and trying to get much higher than GR7580 can give you a few headaches with your toughness but provided you can get over them then it can be a really fun build. Now don't get me wrong guys, Legacy of Dreams Mages is better than Rathma but because this is a casual tier list and we get the set for free we're going to bump this one up to tier 5. Rounding out tier 5 we're going to be taking the Pestilence Necro. Now this has got an absolutely phenomenal speed farm build that Lord Fluffy did. So the auto lancer, it really does hit very hard. The only downside you've got is again for pushing, it's not particularly amazing because the mechanics of the speed farm build mean that you have to take one of the items out and it kind of falls apart a little bit. Now Pestilence is still a good necro push build, nothing wrong with it. It's just it's not the starting set. There are probably more powerful necro builds and certainly more powerful other builds. But it is a lot of fun to play, so if you do want to check that out, it is pretty good moving on to tier 4 and from this point i think you can get quite debatable about a lot of these builds as to where they would fall and personal preference does come into this quite a lot starting us off we've got the patterns of justice monk now this set at the moment is bugged so there is a damage drop off i think at the moment which might well get hot fixed but it still does look like it will do 75 80 speed farms pretty quick and i do believe it can push past 100 now obviously it's pretty new so we don't have too much time to figure this one out so again we'll have to wait and see how it plays out but it does look a lot of fun it looks very lazy very casual player friendly lots of toughness so yeah pretty good build next in tier 4 we've got the legacy of dreams dagger of darts witch doctor now obviously this is legacy of dreams so it is harder to gear and we've got the gem to rank up but this is such a powerful build and it is very easy to play there's no kind of difficult mechanics you just point your fetishes at stuff and blow them up so because it's just so super strong and very new player friendly, we're going to allow this in even though it is Legacy of Dreams at this point. And rounding out tier 4, we've got the Slam Barb. Now Lord Fluffy's done a really nice speed farm guide. Looks like this could do 85-90s without too much bother. And also there presumably will be a Slam Push build that develops at some point because the multipliers on this are pretty huge. And Seismic Slam is just a really nice skill. I did push with this I think a few seasons back and it was a lot of fun. Now we're really getting into some big hitters in tier 3 guys, we're going to start things off with the Shadow Impaled Demon Hunter. Now Shadow is really strong and you will always find it towards the top of the boards for Demon Hunter at the start of any new season. And this is simply because it is so easy to gear for, it's a very tough and tanky set, it's really good for pushing. The speed build is fairly good as well because you can move through the map so quickly and elite snipe very efficiently. The only reason I've put it in tier 3 is because it isn't the starting set and I do like the starting set this season but also I'm not sure how this fits with the season theme too well because if you do reduce yourself down to an elite sniper maybe you're not getting quite as much eternal conflict benefit as something that will clear trash. Now that remains to be seen how it will play out in the season theme so this well could move up and it is a very strong build and I do really like this one but we're going to concentrate on some of the others ahead of it. Now next up in tier 3 we've got the Roland Sweep Seder. This isn't amazing for speeds, albeit we can do GR80 in about 4 or 5 minutes with minimal Paragon. It's a really strong push build, probably not going to be the strongest Seder push build, but as a starting set it is very nice. Now Seder's got lots of really good toughness abilities, you can also work your way into some nice mobility skills and movement speed buffs for Seder. So all in all I think it's a pretty solid choice for an opening set and it will actually get you quite far. You know I could see easily going past 100 
if you just wanted to play this set. So pretty strong and a pretty good choice. And rounding us out in tier three, it's gonna be the Tal Meteor Shower Wizard. Now this is really strong for a push build, guys. We did GR100, I think, on the guide that we made with about 1100 Paragon, and the gear was pretty bad on that. So there was a lot of room for growth. The only reason it isn't getting into the top couple of tiers is because it is not exactly the easiest thing in the world to speed farm with. So you can do speed farm, but you can't do something really quick. You're not gonna be blasting rifts out in two, three minutes. You can't speed run bounties with it. And that's pretty much the only reason that I've bumped it down but it is very, very strong and it's a lot of fun to play. Again, tanky and easy and very casual friendly. Now I did find the top six difficult to put into an order and I think you could argue to move them around quite a bit, but we're gonna open with the Aegis of Valor, Fist of Heaven's Crusader. Now, if you're gonna play Seder, I do genuinely think this is the fastest way to do T16 and Key Farm. It's brilliant for bounties because you have so much access to the pony. It's a lot of fun to play and we were crushing GR 7980 in under three minutes every time with 800 Paragon. It's new, it's shiny, it plays really well and I'm pretty sure there'll probably be a fairly decent push build that will evolve from it as well. That's why it's getting into tier two. Now next up we have the Sambuku Wave of Light Monk. Wave of Light is the monk's most dominant skill I'd say. And we're gonna go for Sambuku over Legacy of Dreams and Inners because I think with the extra juice that this has had this season, and the fact that the set is flexible, you can mix it very easily with Crimsons, you can mix it with Canes for key farming, and all in all, Wave of Light is a lot of fun, easy to play, and this is a set that does everything. So you can push, you can do just speeds very well, you can do bounties, key farming, it's just absolutely brilliant for everything. And it is a very good set. Now, whether you end up pushing with Sambuku, if you do end up pushing with Wave of Light, you're going to share gear pieces. So I think as a casual player, it's very good and will suit you for a long time, even if you do try and move off onto something else. Now, rounding out tier two, I've gone for the Heaven's Fury Crusader or the Shotgun Sailor. Now, I've put this in fourth place because I don't really know where this is going to end up after the hot fix. At the moment, it probably does look like the most powerful build in the game. But as I say, I think there's a high probability that will get changed. It's not necessarily going to be the fastest thing in the world. But again, we'll have to look at a guide at some point and try and see what we can work out of it. But it is absolutely bonkers strong at the moment. And the only reason I haven't put it in the top tier is because I do think it will get nerfed. So as I say, we'll redo the guide in a couple of weeks. And if you check back, it may well be that this makes it into the top three. So we come to the top tier guys, this is it, the big three that I think are absolutely fantastic for casual players. Now in third we're going to take the Veer's Wizard. Veer's Chantodo is extremely powerful, it's been top of the charts early season for the last couple of seasons. They have indicated that they want to change this and nerf it slightly and again there is a bug currently at the moment I think where Chantodo stacks drop off. So obviously if that doesn't get fixed this would come out of S tier but I'm making the assumption that this will go to the season start in the same condition that it was at the start of last season. It's very easy to play, it's very tough and tanky. You can push really far with it, you can speed drift very well with it. You can also do bounties and key farming because it is just so strong and so much mobility because of the Perma Archon and the Archon stacks. Now in second, this is the build that I played last season. It is the multi-shot Demon Hunter. Now the set is absolutely phenomenal. It is really good for pushing. You can go very high, very quickly. I think we'd cleared GR100 with only about 20 hours worth of game time last season. Gem ups are brilliant. You can speed drift tremendously well with this. You can take lots of interesting items and blast content very quickly. It's great for bounties. You've got so much mobility. It literally just does everything exceptionally well. And also because of the wave clear potential, it matches so well with the season theme. You're going to be getting extra juice almost no matter what you do with this set. Definitely one of my all time favorite builds and it is so powerful. So we get to the overall winner and I'm sure you've probably worked it out by now. But in my opinion, the best casual player build for next season is going to be the Whirlwind Barbarian. Now, Wrath of the Waste is the starting set. I think it's probably a little easier to gear into a Whirlwind Barb than it is into a multi-shot Demon Hunter. Obviously this build has been buffed from last season, so I'm going to play a lot of it because it's going to be a little bit fresher than say Multi-Shot which I played a lot last season. Again this is a build that can do everything, you can push, GR speed, bounty, key farm, all of it's very easy, you just hold down right click and off you go. And also a slight advantage over Multi-Shot is that you're almost instantaneously pretty tanky as a Barbarian because it's very easy to get the toughness buff items. 
whereas you're a lot more reliant on the Crimson set for the multi-shot Demon Hunter. Obviously some people might go the season without finding the Crimson's plans. But 1 and 2 are very close and I think either makes an excellent choice for Season 19. So that's it guys, there are absolutely loads of builds that haven't made it into the list. Nothing against them, I love lots of different builds that haven't made it. It's, this is just the way I wanted to make the list. So by all means, feedback as I said earlier is very much welcome. Legacy of Dreams, Blast Shield, Akan, Condemned Crusader are both really strong. Demon Hunter you could have picked N6M4 or Marauders or even Natalia's very easily. And it'll be interesting to see what also comes out as the season progresses. So as I say guys, if you have enjoyed the video, if you could leave me some feedback, that would be great. I will do this again in two to three weeks if you have enjoyed it. So please do let me know. As always guys, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. I wish you all the best for season 19. Good luck with your RNG. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.